Yeah, I'll be able to see yourself. So anyway, um, I'm, I'm honored. I'm a little bit nervous. I told Dan, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've given the message many times here in the, in the church and never saw a second, uh, thought a second thing about it. But then I thought, man, I'm doing it in front of a camera. I don't know, maybe I'm a little camera shy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, we'll start off with um, our, uh, our prayer. Please read with me. Lord, open our hearts and our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. By the power of your Holy Spirit. That as the scriptures are read, your word proclaims, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. 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 So today, uh, my scripture for today is uh, found in uh, Colossians uh, 3, 12 through 17, and, and uh, we'll, we'll start by reading that. And I'm moving the slides with my phone, so pardon me for that part. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So, you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in wisdom and with gratitude in your heart. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God, the Father through him. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So, as uh, Dan asked me really months ago, because he was planning on being on vacation to, uh, to do a, a message or two, actually, as it started out, um, I started thinking about, as I always do, or worrying about, however you want to put it, you know, what am I going to talk about? What, 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 what scripture am I going to use? What words are going to come out of my mouth? And uh, I was, to be perfectly honest with you, I was standing in the middle of my bedroom, and on the wall is an embroidery picture, or a needlepoint picture that we, uh, we got from Michelle's grandmother um, that had this, this verse, uh, to clothe yourself in love. And, and I said, let me go look that up because it's been up there for a long time and I haven't really read it before like this. So anyway, as it turned out, that's, that's how I came across this thing. And uh, as reading and studying it, and I found out that, that this was a, a letter from Paul that he, uh, he, he wrote um, while in prison, which I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later, but uh, it, it's a blueprint for life. It's, 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 it's how we are to be and interact as, as Christians. And I'm kind of just gonna go over uh, the verses little by little um, to talk about them a little bit because uh, it, it is a strategy that Paul um, gives us to, to, to live for God day by day. Uh, he asks us to, uh, to imitate Christ's compassion and to, with a forgiving attitude. Uh, he, he uh, I gotta pull this up because my eyes don't work like that. Yeah, you got, it does say something. So the beginning verse in 12 is an, is an introduction to the, the, the people of Coloss. Uh, and in its day of the writing of this letter, and yet, it also is to us right here in Callahan or, or wherever you're at out there in Facebook world. It, it's, it's to you and to you and to you and to me and, and, and to all of us. It's still applicable. And, and, I, and I'm going to just pause right there because so many times I think we get caught up in reading scripture and thinking, well, you know, that was applicable back then, but. It really isn't. And, and yeah, there may be some things in the Bible that kind of entertain that, that to us, but 
But this, this is from beginning to end. It, this is never going to stop. This is how we are to live as Christians. This, this scripture is also a lot of times uh, recognized as a, as a uh, as starting a new life in Christ is, 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 uh, is some of the, the uh, words that is used. And I, and I think that as we go on, you'll see that um, it talks about clothing ourselves. And I think that that's, uh, that's, that's how we, we do. This is why, why Paul chose those letters to close, because we're putting on new. And we hope that we've been living this way through, through our lives, but... By reading the scripture, we know that if we haven't been, that we need to clothe ourselves in this. It talks about uh, let love be your guide. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Um, talks about forgiveness. Talks about not uh, letting people get in your way. Uh, verse uh Bear with one another, verse 13. Bear with one another, and if anyone has complaint against one another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And uh, forgiving, uh, the key to forgiving is to remember how much God has forgiven you. Uh, we can't measure that, how much forgiveness he has for us. We, uh, you know, we continually sin. We continually aren't as righteous as we should be. And no matter what, we're forgiven. God is forgiven us through Christ. Verse 14 goes on to say, above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And and I, I look at this clothe thing, and, uh, and, I, and I look at it as... Uh, it's 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 what you put on, you know. You're 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 putting it on, this love, this everything, and it's as in what people see. So today I have on a what color is this? Kind of blue gray shirt, and this is what people see. But it's just just what my clothes are. What do really what do people see in me? What whenever I'm out and about, what do people see? Am I clothed in this in this love? Am I? Uh, Imitating Christ through uh, the uh, virtues that he has given us to, to live by. Uh, up, in the, up in 12, it talks about those. Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Are we putting those on? Is this, a, is this what people are seeing in us as we, as we act? Are we the Christians that... that, that we want people to see us like this. Um, 14 goes on and says, um, that talks about the virtues, those virtues I just said, and uh, said they're, they're perfectly bound together in love because as we go out and we are compassionate and we're kind and we, and we are uh, uh, humans and, and, and we seek me uh, meekness and, and this patience thing, they're all meaningless unless... They're combined with love. We can't, on one hand, forgive somebody unless there's a love involved. We can't uh, show compassion without love. If we do, it's fake. It's vacant. It's empty. Or it really doesn't really exist. Um, it's easy to uh, really to mess that part up if we don't have love. I, I look at it sometimes as if. I act as a Christian in utilizing those virtues that, 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 that we should be to imitate Christ, and we do it just on the surface. If we're just doing it because, you know, you know uh, we're half smiling and, you know, we're doing it because maybe we want somebody else to see us doing it and think, oh, they're such great people. Maybe we're just doing it because I don't want to feel bad later, so I'm going to treat this person right. Or maybe, oh, that person's needy, so let me treat them good. It's meaningless if, unless we take and combine that with our love, our Christ, our, 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 our love that, that God wants us to, as his, in his commandment to us, to love one another. 
It's, it's as simple as that. As we demonstrate compassion and we and we forgive people and we make ourselves uh, available as Christians, as we serve, as we as we do the outreaches and the missions that we do here at the church, it's important that we do it with love, not to go through the actions, not to check off a box. You know, hey, God, I've done that. No, we're doing it because we're imitating Christ. We're doing it so that as we do it, we're doing it through the love of Christ, and not through the love of John or Dan or, or, or Kim or anybody. We're doing it as the love of Christ. And we're doing it as, as it said earlier about, or maybe that's later. <laughs> we're doing it as one, and our one is the church. Yes, our little church here in Callahan. Yes, our community of churches here in Callahan. Yes, our community of churches here in Northeast Florida. The Florida Conference, the United Methodist Conference, the World Universe Church. This is, this is the one. And in, in today's time, in this season that we're going through, it's, it is ever so important that we take advantage of being a Christian and show it. We need to clothe ourselves in this love every day with everything we do. I, I, I see so many things on Facebook and, and uh, out in the Twitch sphere or whatever you want to call it. People making masks and uh, uh, the drive-by birthdays. Uh, you know, you think about this. These are, these are pretty good people that, that can come up with this stuff to start with. The, the, birth, the drive-by birthday thing. What a cool idea. You know, I've seen it from being old people to, to young kids to um, just anybody. And, and I mean... You know, you are sitting at home, and and uh, it's your birthday, <laughs> right, Dan? And uh, yeah, nobody to to celebrate with because you you got to do the social distancing thing. You know, um, you can't blow your birthday candles out because you got a nerf over your mouth. <laughs> but what a blessing is it that these people come together and get in their cars and and make banners and. Invite you out to your driveway's edge and ride by and wish you these things. I mean, golly, I just look at it and, and I, I feel my heart thumping a little bit stronger that, that the world really is full of people imitating Christ and, 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 and showing the love of Christ through, through compassion and, and the acts that they do. Um, Next, in verse 15, he says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Here's where it is. To which you were indeed called into the one body, and be thankful. Now, peace. Christians should live in peace. And to live in peace does not mean that all of a sudden, all the differences that we have are, are eliminated, or, or uh, it doesn't require that, that we work together. Uh, well, what it does require is that we work together as Christians, in, in, regardless of what our differences might be in the political world or in the, uh, you know, what what football team we root for. <laughs> you know, I'm always going to go to sports somewhere along the line. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. What it means is is that we all come together as one united Christian front to to use this love of Christ. To just reach out and touch people, invite them to be a Christian, to show them, to, to, to wear, uh, clothe ourselves in this so that when they do see us, they understand why we're doing it. Not because we're a good guy or a good girl or, you know, it's because this is who we are. We're Christians and we love one another. goes on in 16 it says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly it says teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and in my favorite part of this part is and with gratitude in your heart sing psalms hymns and spiritual songs and, and, and this is so great to me because I love music um, I was brought up in the, in the scouts singing campfire songs. I, I know so many Girl Scout songs still today in my head that it, it's a, 
It drives me crazy sometimes. You hear that, Susan? <laughs> and, uh, but it's still a, a, a great thing. Um, and, and now today, I, I, I listen to Christian music. I mean, I listen to all kinds of music, don't get me wrong. But I, I really enjoy listening to Christian music. And there are songs that I hear on the radios today. There's even the old hymns that I hear um, that, that, we, that we play and, and, and we sing that, that touch me. They make me feel closer to God. That music, those words, that spirituality of, of the melody that just becomes part of my soul. And as I hear that and I sing the words or just read the words or listen to the words, I just feel like I'm in this auditorium with Christ. I just, you know, and it's even greater when I, I, I'm in a place of, of hugeness and there's so many people singing with their hands raised and you can just feel in their heart that they're just praising God. And that, that's what this is about. It's what this, this is about, you know. And I'm going to say it again because it, it says, with gratitude in your hearts, sing praises and hymns. With gratitude in your heart. And yeah, some of, my, some of the songs are, are, are actually prayers. Um, I think some of the songs can, can, I don't know, they meet all types of, uh, of the way. But, but the biggest thing about the songs that we sing is, to me is, is that it is a praise and worship. We're telling, we're, we're screaming it, we're yelling it, we're making a joyful noise that we love you. You do for us. We can't wait to be with you. That's what we're about. That's what we do. That's, that's us as being Christians. We go through these acts of love and, and charity and outreach and mission, and we do it, and then we come back and we sing about it. I, I don't know how much better it can get. <laughs> well, man, I'm not going to break out the song, but, but uh, no fear there. John. And it ends up uh, with uh, in verse 17. It says, And whatever you do, in whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wow. Everything we do, everything we do. I think about it. When I mean, somebody says, everything you do, I think, you know, I tie my shoe. Do I think about it? Yeah, that's a pretty mundane thing to do. You know, you tie your shoe and you, you bend over and you, you know, suck in some breath because you had to. <laughs> At least me. <laughs> and you tie your shoe. What a good time just to say a little prayer. Thank you, God, for giving me the ability to tie my shoe. The coordination in my fingers, the, the thought process in my mind, the, the air that I'm going to suck in whenever I raise back up. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's everything we do. And I say that, but at the same time, I think in everything we say, when we're at the grocery store and that cashier is is uh, beeping us through, you know, and, and uh, maybe trying to have a little small talk or whatever, hey, Everything we say, what we say to her, do we want to take and project ourselves as, oh, this sucks, I wish this coronavirus would get over with, I'm so tired of this. Or do we say, it's going to be over, be positive. Things are, are, are different, yes, but are they really bad different? Or are they really maybe a little better? And how are we going to learn from this? To me, there's, there's, a, there's a ton of things to do in everything we do. And before I get done, I want to talk a little bit about Paul. And uh, we often, and I know myself talking from just a, a regular Joe that reads the Bible and does some devotions, and I, and I always hear about Paul and, and him writing letters from prison. And of course, you know, I think, you know, he's, that back in that day, he's, you know, chained up to the wall or all in chain or whatever. Well, Paul was a little bit better off. He was in a little bit of what we call it today, uh, uh, I can't think of the word right now. Um, what they say is, is that Paul basically was just kind of like under house arrest. He may have been chained to a guard at times or something like that, but he was free to write and to talk and, and to do things. But the point that I want to get to is, is that he still was in prison. He still was restricted on what he could do. But yet, 
this, this apostle of God wrote letters to the Corinths and, and to the, uh, what I call these people, the Colosh. Um, who else did he write to? Galatians. And I, I, I know more. Ephesians. Ephesians. So, so here's a guy who was in prison and did not let that restriction hold him back from putting God's love out here. Here this guy wrote this, these verses we just talked about in, in, in prison, and yet he had the foresight and the will and the want and the love for Christ to take his, his feather and ink or whatever parchment or whatever he had and write this stuff down and then give it to a messenger to take to these towns. And we're sitting around in our house with our mask, making masks and stuff. That's great. That's getting it out. But if Paul can take and evangelize and preach and be this apostle, be this speaker for Christ while he's in prison, what can we do right now when we're kind of stuck to our house? But even more, what can we do when we get out and we're back out and about? What can we do but live like by this blueprint? What can we do to further show God's love through everything we do? I just... Uh, I'm no, I'm, I'm no saint, you know. I, I, I go out and, uh, and do stupid stuff and, and uh, act a fool sometimes. And, and uh, I think that as I've matured in life, I, 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 at least now I, I think about it and I, I pray about it and, and ask for forgiveness of, of, of the things that I do. I try a lot harder to, to, to walk the right way and to do the right things. I... Uh, I, I, I'm up here giving a message, uh, something I never dreamt I would do 25 years ago, you know. Um, and I do it because of my love for Christ. I do it because I know it's the right thing to do because I know that I have given myself to him. And I know that I'm going to live with him through eternity. And I think that's really what everything we need to know about it is, is that when we give ourselves to Christ and we invite him to live in us and we take him and we put him out with our arms wide to those who need help that's what we need to do that's how we need to live amen thank you I'm going to do the next song so we're going to close out with uh there within my heart, it's a melody, as I said, it's on, uh, on page 380, if you're in the uh, hymnal, and if not, it is a video on the screen, and the words are a little bit small, so you might want to hold the phone up close to your face, but you should know this song, so sing with me.